evening. Right, firstly, I'll say bear with me again because I'm still, in fact, I'm not better than yesterday, I'm worse. So, uh, I've just literally fell asleep this afternoon, woke up, I think it was five to eight, jumped off my bed to come out here, come on here. Oh, God. I'm dying. So please be aware. Again, I can't. I, I'm really sorry. But the show must go on. Right. Um. Well, actually, quite a bit to happen today. Since I first set this up, set this live up. Um, I actually come across some, another, I think it was from a, t a TikTok or an Instagram account. I can't remember which one it was. I've got it. And now, normally, I wouldn't discuss this, but I thought, I'm sorry, I've got him. Because of what, because of what was said in the um the press the police uh press release today i thought i've got to, i've got to talk about this what i've heard here on this video right when i was seeing it i have to share it to my my page and i wasn't on about the woman who actually showed the video uh the cl um the clip of this what's it it's the united nations no ucn united cajun navy the head guy there talking to someone about why they pulled away from the sebastian rogers case now when you hear this, you probably all think the same as what I did. What a load of BS. Because if that was the case, why haven't you been to the law, to the law enforcement, to TPI? Right? And said, look, we know where, because they're claiming to know where Sebastian Rogers is. Yep, you heard it. They're claiming to know where Sebastian Rogers is. But they can't get to him because they are being threatened. They are being shot at. And it's on federal land. Well, if it's on federal land, go to law enforcement. Give them the information you've got. And, make, and the TBI can sort that out. If it's credible information, TBI will go in there. Right? So, yes, I'm going to play it with you. Today we had a press release by the police. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Today we had a press release. And, in, and this is why I'm going to show you the clip of what they've said. Because at the end, we, we didn't find nothing out. Well, sorry, I found something out. I found out that they found a pair of glasses. Right, and I believe it was one uh, the lad who were who helps the father Seth Rogers who found them or Seth found them. Now they can't be sure if they're Sebastian's or not. I'm sorry, but you've only got to look at the pictures. You'll tell if they're Sebastian's glasses or not. 
anyone. They found these glasses and they're still investigating these glasses. Still. And then they was asked about United Cage of Navy uh, filing any report of threats and on all this stuff. And the police said no. No. No report of any threats has been filed. Why? It said otherwise they would do something about it if that was the case. But no threats have been filed. So when I heard that, I thought, what a load of T-O-S-S-E-R-S. -S -S. Do you know what I said? T-O-S-S-E-R-S. -S -S. They are the U-C-N. They lie through their back teeth. And I'm fed up of them. They said they pulled away from the case because of threats. Fine. Fine, go away, we don't want you. We know the father did, but for what you did when you was helping, wasn't much. It wasn't much that they ever did. I think there was what, one, two searches they did? Two? And one was called off because they didn't have enough searches, so they called it off early. And another one was called off for, well, I don't know, for some, so they finished that day early. They called one search off due to bad weather. Oh my God, just go home. Go home. Seth was doing a better job on his own without you lot. You know what I mean? He really was. And, but I felt sorry for Seth because he was the one who asked them to come and help. He asked them. And they did come and help. So for the sake of Seth, I, I'm here. I said, look, just doesn't matter what your thoughts are about the UCA. Right? For the sake of Seth and, for, and to help find Sebastian, go to this sign point, right? This meeting place and go and search if you can. Right? But then, after that, they put out this uh, notice, right, on Twitter or something like that, saying that was pulling out the Sebastian Rogers search. What, you, you, T-O-S-S-E-R-S, -S -S -E bunch of them, um, right? I've just told, told people on my live, and other people, YouTubers, were telling them on their lives to go and help you. And now you turn around the next day and say you're pulling out. Well, go F yourself. Right? So I'm going to pull it up. It is, I'm sorry, because I fell asleep. I did set my alarm. My alarm went off. But you know that old thing you do when you hit your alarm and you turn just it off? Well, I did that and I fell back to sleep. It was only because of my cat that I woke up. Right. So it's only because of one of the cats moaning or jumping up on my bed that woke me up. And then I looked at my phone and shot up out of bed myself. Right. This is it, it's twist, twisting a laundry. Find Sebastian. This is what someone posted onto a Facebook page for Sebastian. Right? And it is actually good. And I, you can see there what I put. Oh my God, what? Utter BS. Not her.
she's only playing the uh <coughs> I don't know if it's a phone call or something like that. She's only playing it. That was sent to her. So I'm so sorry, I've got the sniffles, I've got the sneezes, I've got the cough. <coughs> cough. I'd say to my grandson today, he phoned me up. <coughs> Wanting to come over tonight. And I could say no because I'm not very well. I said, but hopefully I'll be a lot better tomorrow. And I'll come and get you tomorrow. And you can come and stay tomorrow night. So... There's my okay, okay, for this time. So hopefully tomorrow, once I've had a good night's sleep, I'll be feeling a lot better. But this always happens when I go down to uh, down to my daughter's. Every time I come back, I know I'm ill. I come back and I've got a stuffed up nose, cough, chesty cough like. And I just want to stay in bed all day because that's how I feel. I feel like I'm dying. So let's have a look at this. Following her. We 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 on to something. All right, I'll go back to the beginning. Sebastian Roger. I'll just make sure. Yes, it's all there. Oh, working. Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Let's put my headphones on. Oh, my God. Let's sort this out now, okay? First found, the United Cajun Navy came in town into Hendersonville, Tennessee, to help look for 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers, who has been missing for over a month now. I apologize for my cat. Um, what's important here is who said what next? So so we know the UCN, or it stands for United Cajun Navy, um, packed up and backed up and said, listen, we can't, the search is off because of all of these threats. So um, when will they search again? This is very important considering this phone call that happened. This is a recorded phone call where they claim they know where Sebastian is. Ooh, I want you to take a listen. It's going to unravel from here, and we need to know what's going on. So, uh, do they really know where he is, and what can we do to get them going on that search? Okay, make sure you bookmark this so you can find your way back. <coughs> and you know what? We had to pull out because of threats, but let me tell you something. We didn't pull out. We just backed well. You know what happened? Uh, we 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 on to something. That's why we're getting followed. That's why we're getting threatened, and that's why we're getting pulled threateningly. Do we know what happens? No. Do we have a theory that we believe is, you know, the most reliable theory that we're pretty sure is what happened? Of course. Can we get to the where the body is? We think that's why we keep getting shot or, or, or threatened, you know, and all kind of follow and everything else. We know that we're in the right area. We just can't get access to that area.
Sebastian Rogers found. The United Cajun Navy came in town into Hendersonville, Tennessee, to help look for 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers, who has been missing for over a month now. I apologize for my cat. Um, what's important here is who said what next? So we know the UCN, or it stands for United Cajun Navy, um, packed up and backed up and said, listen, we can't, the search is off because of all of these threats. So um, when will they search again? This is very important considering this phone call that happened. This is a record. They know where Sebastian is. Ooh, I want you to take a listen. It's going to unravel from here, and we need to know what's going on. So, uh, do they really know where he is, and what ca can we do? Right, I know you've heard it once, but it was only two minutes long, and that's why I'm playing it again. I'm sorry, I had you on mute because I had to go to my bed back bedroom to get my tissues, and. Right. So we're going in again, okay? You need to get them going on that search, okay? Make sure you bookmark this so you can find your way back. And you know what? We had to pull out because of threats, but let me tell you something. We didn't pull out. We just backed well. Right. You heard him say we had to pull out because of threats. No. No. Because if there was any threats, they should have gone to the law enforcement. And reported them. And they didn't. What happened? Uh, we, 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 we are on to something. That's why we're getting followed. That's why we're getting threatened. And that's why we're getting pulled threateningly. Do we know what happened? No. Do we have a theory that we believe is, you know, the most reliable theory that we're pretty sure is what happened? Of course. Can we get to the, where the body is, we think? That's why we keep getting. Did you hear that? Can, yeah, he says it come out of his mouth. Being pulled, certainly. Do we know what happened? No. Do we have a theory that we believe is, you know, the most reliable theory that we're pretty sure is what happened? Of course. Can we get to the where the body is, we think? Can we get to where the body is, we think? Right? They don't know where he is. No one knows where this boy is. And they're talking in the negative, right? Where the body is, right? Well, I'm sorry, until Sebastian is found, either alive or un unalive, right? Then I'm going with the fact that he is alive. That's why we keep getting shot or, or, or threatened, you know, and all kind of follow and everything else. We know that we're in the right area. We just can't get access to that area. Well, I'm sure if they went to law enforcement or the service, whoever, and made these reports, right, and gave them their official findings, they would get the CBI to get it cleared so the TBI could go on that land. Because if it's federal land, then the TBI can go on there. Right? Just every Joe Blocks can't. Right? But TBI can. So why don't they just go to TBI and give them the information they have? Because they're making this out now that they know where this body is to make them look good. Well, I'm sorry, it's all BS. All utter BS. Hi, Lady K. Exactly, that's what I said. You think they will turn turn that information in? That's why it, I don't I don't believe them. Right? Even on that police. 
release, press release to go by the police. They said no threats had been made. No, um, no, no UCN member at being in and putting a report of a threat towards them had been made. Not one. Right? Now, why they won't work with the law enforcement or TBI, I don't know. <coughs> I know for a fact they tried to take uh, credit for Riley's train, finding him, and they didn't. Good to see you too. Anyway, as I said, I've got a really bad chesty cough. I'm cold and I'm trying to get through this so that I can go back to bed <laughs> but I wasn't going to call it off I could have called this off but I thought no there's a lot of information that has come out overnight and today that I wanted to discuss right so what they're saying is a load of Take it with a pinch of salt, if I was anyone. All, all of those on Twitter, please. Believe it or don't believe it, right? It's up to you. It really is. And um, it's, just, it's just them trying to make themselves look better. Because they gave up on this poor lad, Sebastian. They gave up. And yes, yes, I could probably believe that I've been they have been followed. I believe that. Because Seth has been followed and some of the other volunteers are being followed. Right? Seth has said that himself. But Seth isn't scared of by him. And neither are all any of the other volunteers scared of by him. So They're just a bunch of wimps. And I think they are, and uh, I don't know if anyone's seen it, uh, I think it was on an X, G I R R. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> oh, dear. G I R R put a post up saying, anyone who donated to UCN demand your money back. <laughs> right? Because he was all for the UCN as well. Until they did what they did with him. How they threatened him. How they called the police on him. And the police came and said he wasn't doing anything wrong. Well, I hope the late the young girl who posted this on TikTok, I hope she sent it to, sent this to TBI. This needs to get to TBI, right? Because then they can chase down UCN and say, what's this recording, this phone call? Where you've got information about Sebastian and where he is. So you think you should be telling us? Right? But they don't know where he is. It's just to cover their backside, that's all it is. It's a saving grace. It's hoping that people go, oh my god, get UCN back in. Bring them back, bring them back. They know where Sebastian is. No, they don't. No, they don't. Oh, they don't. Anyway, so that was what? And what's this? You know, I've seen that. That was yesterday's, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, here's the other video. 
Now, the other video I'm going to show you, if you've got headphones or earpieces, plug them in if you haven't already. Because the woman who posted this, she, what she doing, she, uh, she's cleaned and enhanced audio of Sebastian talking. So she's took that audio of, of this video and cleaned it up and enhanced it to make it a bit clearer. But I still say, if you've got earpieces or headphones, use them. Now, this is Sebastian, and I believe it's at a party. And if this is right, uh, who was it? I think it's JLR saw this video. Or was it Nick, Nick Berry? One of them. And they said, when you look at him, you wouldn't think he's got autism. When you hear him, you wouldn't think he's got autism. And you don't, they don't look any different to Tom, Dick or Harry. They're just unique people. Very, very unique and very, very clever children. Anyway, so we're going to just make sure it's up there, yes. Daddy. Here we go. Oh, boys. Oh, that's Thank good. you. Thank 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 now he's red. Love yeah, that nice one. I know it's okay. Double chip. Right, no, stop. Wherever the double chip lands, it'll give you twenty. Okay, who's that's that you? One spot that has two chips stacked on top of each other. If you want to take that top one, you can tuck it in front of the bottom one to level the playing field there. No. <laughs> Never. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Never. 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 All right, team, that double chip. That gets a four. What? I'm taking a video of. Say, boys, I'm going to celebrate with us today. We're going to have a lot of. Right? No. It's just like any other young lad with. Autism. They say things which might seem a bit inappropriate. Like my grandson who's being assessed now, right? He's being assessed. Or on the waiting list to be assessed. Someone will do some, like I'll do something or his sister will do something. And you could get hurt, right? Now, a bit like... You know when you laugh when you're with a friend and a friend does something silly and you laugh first and then ask if you're okay, if they're okay. Well, he just laughs. He'll laugh at anything, any damn, anything that looks, to him that looks silly or sounds silly. He'll laugh. And it can be in a bit in, inappropriate. But that's just my grandson. Huh? That's just my grandson. It doesn't mean no harm by it. It's just how he is. Now, you heard him say, Sebastian, go, obviously, whoever was on the mic had said something about the game they was playing. Right? And he's gone, no, never. Did you hear the voice in the background? Thank you, Clark Chris. Right? Yes, it is. Or something like that, he said. And then it says, when they drop them cone, them slot things, she said, he said, such and such has got to get the 200. And Melissa said, no, she doesn't. Now, all she had to say, well, she could have just totally ignored what he said. Right? 
which I would have done. I just ignored what he had said then. Because it's just inappropriate, okay? But then again, I've gone to places and I've gone, I've oh, seen it like when I was playing darts years and years ago. And we go, such and such, you need to get a double plenty. Double. Now, <coughs> whether they needed to get that double or not, I, I would say things like that. And so would others, right? It's sort of like to put the other team off. You need to get a double on this, you know. Right? So, it's, it's just the way she answered him, right? It's like she's got no patience for him. And it's like, before that, he, he would do something or said something. And she said, Sebastian, pack it in. <coughs> and this Melissa <coughs> is Chris Proudfoot's sister. Then... Near the end, you heard him shouting, Melissa. <coughs> Wait, all right. Melissa, you need to, and she said, and she cut around and she went, what, Sebastian? I'm filming. Now, she didn't need to answer like that. She could go, yes, Sebastian, I'm filming at the moment. You know what I mean? But she thinks she's got no patience for Sebastian. She's snapping at him all the time. Anything he says or does, she's snapping at him. And that isn't right to be with a child who's autistic. It really isn't. You have to be more understanding. So, let's have a... Is this at the end? Was that at the end? Yeah. So we'll watch it again. Okay? So if you got headphones, put them on. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of chips. We're gonna give it a nudge. <laughs> Alright, it looks like red team, unfortunately, that one was a miss. But blue team, that one was a hit. Now he's ready. Love yeah, that nice one. I know, it's okay. Yeah, stop. Wherever the double chip lands, it'll give you 20. So it's going to be 20. Okay, who's, that's you. That one spot that has two chips stacked on top of each other. If you want to take that top one, you can tuck it in front of the bottom one to level the playing field there. No. Never. Yes, Hey, you have to get the 200 again. No, she doesn't. She can get whatever. All right, red team. That double chip. That gives them four. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. What? I'm taking a video of. Say, boys. It was nice to hear his voice. That's what I like. I love that video. Because not because of what was being said by the adult, by Melissa. She was putting him down constantly. Pack it in. Oh, stop it, uh, Sebastian. No, she doesn't, Sebastian. And all this like It was very rough, very off-handed sort of thing. She had no patience for Sebastian. And that's his dad, his stepdad side of the family. So, I feel sorry, for, I feel really bad for Sebastian. But, seeing that video makes it a whole lot different, you know what I mean? You can have, you know, you heard the Sebastian, you've seen photos of him for the last. 36 days, that's all we've done. Right. And now we can put a voice, a voice to that name, a voice to that picture. 
What I can stand is why law enforcement will not release any video of him leaving that r restaurant where they went on the singing eye. Christ, when Riley Strain went missing, they showed every figure of him walking down that road, right? Where he ran across this one road and then hit his head on a post, got up, stumbled away, walked on down this road, right? They followed him and they showed all these videos of where he was. To help people jog people's memory, right? Now, why don't they just release that video of him coming out of that restaurant with his mom? Someone might have been in, I don't know if it's like a big car park out there, but there's other places you can eat there as well. Someone from somewhere else might have seen them, right? It might jog someone's memory. Anyway, <coughs> I'm so sorry. So, they won't release this video, which is a bit annoying. Right, and the father's not going to release any of these videos, which I can understand. Because like I said the other night, if he don't get Sebastian back, that's all he's got. That's all he's got. Of his, which you know the house has got, you know what I mean? He don't want us to be sharing those videos of his son. But he, it's his son, his videos, he's not sharing. And I totally agree with him. Oh, God, I've got me a little tissue. Oh, so, but I don't understand why the police won't release the videos. But it was pointed out as well in one live I was watching that Katie, the mother, said. When she was asked, is there anyone else apart from yourself who can testify to Sebastian Sebastian on the Sunday? She's got, there's his two aunts, his niece, and the people in the restaurant. All right? Oh, dear me. Come on, baby. Your fur is not going to help me at the moment, so you need to stay away from me, baby. You're going to make me sneeze even more. But she did say in one of the interviews that she went to BJ, she met up with the two aunts and the niece. They went to BJ. They then went bowling and then went for them to eat. Right? All together. No. The wife just said herself there was only the mother and Sebastian in that restaurant, no one else. When they walked out that restaurant, they caught them on camera, and that's the camera that Seth was shown the other day. Of Katie and Seth walking out the restaurant towards her car. No one else. So why did she make out that there was other people with them when they went for dinner? And I know for a fact, if you go back to the very first interview, she said, when they asked her what they did on the Sunday, she said, oh, we had some errands to run. We met. And then we come home 
dropped off our groceries because I picked up some snacks because he's a teenager. So he dropped, put all his snacks away. And then we went out for dinner. She makes out, you know, that direct BJ's, went bowling and then went to dinner, then come home. In which case, that just blew her out the water because she said the only person who could see would see Sebastian was the only other person on that road who would see her that Sebastian was alive on Sunday would be her neighbour across the road, right? Who would catch him putting the rubbish out. And that's just been blowing out the water. <coughs> Because they left the they left the restaurant, I think between six and twenty past six, something like that. Apparently, it takes twelve minutes to get home from that restaurant there. So say half six, I got home. It's pitch black thing. Well, it's dark, right? It's dark. But there is enough light about. <coughs> <coughs> from their neighbour's houses. <coughs> God, you know. Oh God, I'm just going to get some water. This juice is not working. Right, so where was I? So by the time he got home and then put the bins out, put the bins out, you're looking at about seven o'clock. Seven between seven and nine. Because at half at nine o'clock, she said he went to bed. So it had to be between say half six and nine o'clock that he put the bins out. Well it's dark. But one YouTuber and her partner drove around that area on the night time. Now there is lights, no street lights, but there's enough lights from the houses. Right, from their security lights and all this lot from other houses in the area. To give some light in the in the road, in the street. But apparently the neighbour across the road said she caught, they caught something on camera, on their doorbell, but they can't be sure if it's Sebastian or not, because it's too dark. Right? Now, Kathy, Katie said, on the night time, it gets pitch black out here. No, it gets dark. Not pitch black, because as, that YouTuber said there are lights on from other houses, security lights that are on. They might go up about 11, 12 o'clock and then it will be dark. You know what I mean? But during the evening it wouldn't be pitch black. So it's like, I'm going to laugh. I can sit here and I say, oh, it's dark outside. You know what I mean? Because I'm looking out my window. It's dark outside. But actually, when I get outside, it's going to be lighter than what it seems. Because we do have street lights and lights from other houses and places like that. So it's a lot lighter than it seems. It just looks dark here because I'm looking from the 14th floor out my window and I'm just looking into the night sky. So it's a lot darker than it seems. So, there's a couple of things she said which are getting blown out of the water. Because you wouldn't know. To sit there and say, well, it's, it's, it's pitch black out there. No, it's not. Not till about, I'd say, until once everyone's gone to bed. And some people still have their security lights on when they go to bed. 
This is why we call this gang wars. And don't forget, they had their garage lights on that were on out the back by their garages. They give off a bit of light. So, but it's just the way she's so deterred. I don't it's pitch black out there. You can't see nothing. Only the man I ever would get him on camera. Well, no, she didn't. She got some someone, but she don't. She can't say for definite if it's Christopher or uh, Sebastian. You know what I mean? Can you be anyone? She just don't can't say a hundred percent like Sebastian. Well, I can't have this tablet. Well, I don't look like a pharmacist today. I've got a box of tissues. I've got my Lemsip tablets. I've got my normal medication that I have to take. Oh, God. I'm going to get some cough medicine tomorrow to help with my digestive cough. Because really, I can't afford to get ill. Because my immune system is already weakened by the treatment I had two years ago. Coming up to two years ago. So my immune system is already weakened. So just wear a normal cold, I could shake off a, in a day. Right? Get up in the morning, be like I am all. Right? And then go to bed and be fine the next day. Okay. It takes that little bit longer for me to recover from anything, eh? even the slightest little cold. Well, it didn't help having to go out today in that very fine, like misty rain. Very fine. It's like misty rain. Oh. So, we're going to watch, what we were going to watch now, um, oh, where is it, oh yes, yes, what is this, oh right, yeah, I think this is it, is this it? What's this? Uh, okay. Right. Now there's something here that was sent to T dash rev seven five seven T rev. Right. Now the guy who sent this to him. Did say he sent it. He sent to TBI. And <coughs> and he did notice like it. <coughs> a few days later, uh, like an undercover police officer and a normal police officer walking down the road. So he was hoping they had been and seen the, the info. Right, now I'll talk as slow as I can and as clear, clear as I can. Right, I would get my voice over to do it, but it won't work on this. It won't work on this, so I can't do that. Right. <coughs> okay, now... It goes. I called in a possible sighting. I don't know if I can get any bigger than that. <coughs> well, I can't get any bigger. I would, I would, but I just can't. 
according a possible sighting to TBI on Friday from March the 20th. Right? And let them know cameras were available available for them to obtain footage. I work on the strip in Gatting, Gatlinburg, can you see? And my job requires me to stand at the door where I work and speak to families walking by. There was a couple that had four boys with them. The boy who looked like Sebastian was in the far back of the family and stood out to me. He appeared to be autistic to me from observing him, but I didn't initially call it in. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't tell if a child autistic. Well, you can, depending if they've got the, um, what they call, simmering or something, uh, mimic. I can't remember. It's where they do the thing with the fingers. But they keep rubbing their fingers together. Right? And they play with the fingers. If you see someone doing that, then it's a way of them calming themselves down. So you know that child could, could be autistic if they're doing that with the fingers rubbing it together. Right? Boy, Sebastian. And he appeared to be autistic to me from observing, observing him. But I didn't initially call it in because the boy didn't seem to be in distress and wasn't wearing glasses. Right? Thought maybe it was just a double ganger twin because I've heard so many rumours that this child was most likely deceased. I regret not calling 911 immediately because this boy looked identical to Sebastian. What caught my attention to him was this bright yellow hat he was wearing. First thing out, it dawned on me that the hat was the hat Luffy from One Piece wears. Now, I don't know who Luffy is or One Piece. I don't. It was a bright yellow hat with a red ribbon wrapped around it. One Piece is an anime, anime and autistic boys love anime. <coughs> they do. They do. <coughs> also, I noticed his dad had a One Piece shirt on during one of his interviews. That the hat confirmed my thoughts of this boy being autistic. And I knew I had to call the TBI the following morning so they could look into it. This boy was the same age, built, height, just no glasses. I emailed the TBI with all the details I could think of, then called to confirm they received it. They pulled it up when I was on the phone and said she would give it the information to an investigator. Saturday morning, I saw a guy in law enforcement that someone sometimes walks the street and he was accompanied by another man in law enforcement that was in uniform. So I do believe maybe they were contacted to obtain video footage. <coughs> oh dear. If Sebastian isn't deceased and it's possible he could be his family or friends of family being hid this boy also had, I have no doubts, was he. I think it's something Seth should be made aware of, so he can follow up with TBI to make sure it's looked into. Oh, believe me. If Seth hears this, and I think he will, because... <coughs> oh, God, no. Because T Rev emailed him that information. Right? So he will get one of these private investigators on today. But yeah, I, I can assure you he will get one of these investigators. On. Because at least then, if the police didn't do anything about it 
at least then his investigators can go and see this in video. You know what I mean? And I'll probably take it, show, get a, a, a recording of it to show the father. And the father could say, that's Sebastian. Oh, no, that's not Sebastian. He knows what his son looks like. But don't forget, they found glasses. So he probably did. He has lost his glasses. And you know, there's some people, you don't know if he's, like, when he went off his meds or something, after his, his meds start coming out of his system, you don't know if he's, If he bumped his head, he all got concussion or something. <coughs> and this family is just talking me. This family might not even watch TV or have the internet because there are some families out there like that. <coughs> Christ, I could be living on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Well, there is no internet or no TV. You don't know. So this is why I said earlier, until they give me, until Seth comes online and tells us that Sebastian has been found but is no longer with us, I won't believe he's still alive. Anyway, I've been on here an hour, coughing up spluttery. <coughs> <coughs> oh dear me, I'm getting so mad now. Right, <coughs> go on, dear. <coughs> Christ's sake. Now, yeah. Yeah, when I was watching TV today, they was talking about the three-hour phone call, right, that Katie and Chris had. I can do three-hour phone calls. I have done a three-hour phone call with my best friends. But my husband, if he was still alive, no. And that's if I, well, maybe five minutes, but that's if I answered the phone. You know what I mean? I didn't even always answer his call. He didn't always answer my calls. And there's no way I'm going to be sitting there for three hours talking to him. He's gone to work, thank God I'll be thinking. <coughs> so. Oh, God. I'm going to play. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, no. If you've seen that interview Seth gave the other day, <coughs> right, where he is a walk, <coughs> walking billboard, he's wearing <coughs> one of these, and he's going in. He's going in, oh God, let me put it up. <coughs> oh God.
Right, I've just got to get through this. <coughs> <coughs> this place with this. But, <coughs> but there's anyone who... <coughs> now, this came from Seth himself. What? Right? It isn't, uh, right? It is by Seth that's helped him set this up. Right? So, if you want one, $25 for the premium unisex t shirt, and you get, I mean, black charcoal. Big night, my baby. Hey, man. Look at that, you know. And Kelly Green. It means you can get in pink, hot pink. Right? As well as indigo, charcoal, storm. And the green. Okay? Well, the women. Pull over. Pull over, hoodie. Right? That's $40. And the crew neck sweatshirt is 35 Oh. Oh, God, get out. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gone. I'm gone. Right, like I was saying, if you want to buy one, the link is in the description. Right? <coughs> you know what, I'm just going to go to that interview now because this is just getting me down. <coughs> but... That is it, okay? Hey, it is. Yeah, this is except <coughs> Get me. I hate it when I get this cough. One of those cops is just can't. What? Oh, just go back a little bit. No, yeah. We too share the anxiety and concern for Sebastian. I want to reiterate that we are doing everything we can to find Sebastian and bring him home. 
despite the passage of time, the commitment to finding Sebastian remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to investigate every possible lead that comes in. The Summer County Sheriff's Office wants to express our gratitude to the community and the many individuals who have helped in the search, the many individuals who have called in tips, the many individuals who have printed flyers and kept Sebastian's face in the news. Nothing would be, uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks this case wide open and we find Sebastian Green. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan and Alan. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. And we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten <coughs> about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on the weekends. They were done during the day. Um, that was very visible, and it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case, that we are not done. This is it's gone back to what could be considered good old-fashioned police work. Um, interviewing individuals, re-interviewing individuals, checking out leads, rechecking leads. Um, we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had, in other jurisdictions, who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they've worked on to uh, get tips from them. We have um, had a you know, day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. It's it's important so we know what's out there. What? <coughs> this bit annoyed me. She said, getting all that information from the ring doorbells and home security was a bit of a chore. A bit of a chore. Wrong words, wrong words to use, love. This is your job to get all that information. Your job. It's not a chore, chore. <coughs> it's your job. Um, we have been reviewing that, reviewing it again. Um, we have had other agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some. Uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the, some of the information that is being provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate, incomplete. <coughs> we don't want this to damage the investigation. So we just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media track channels has been rumors and speculation <coughs> and theories and some of that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting, it's, uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies, agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. 
Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again, it's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also taking tips through email, tbi, T-O, tbi, at tbi.tn.gov. Um, what's next? We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain diligent, get uh, vigilant, um, get Sebastian's picture out there, continue to share his picture, his information. Um, now that it's getting to be nicer, well, not, not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people it may be more um, inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks different, let us know. Something where perhaps a teenager could have hidden. Um, if you have a, a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or ledges where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play, um, and you don't feel comfortable checking it out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is unturned, that there's no stone left unturned, that we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can. We do want to continue to get the tips, but please make it, don't, don't provide information that you might have seen through social media channels. Um, if you have information about Sebastian, about conversations you might have had with him, things he likes to do, places he likes to go, any people he may have mentioned that are in his life, um, that could be helpful in finding out maybe what he was interested in. Finally, uh, we want to thank the community. We want to thank the media. You guys have been really good about keeping his name in the public's eye. Um, that's really important. Um, and thank you for your diligence in providing that information out there. And as Chief Deputy said, we also want to thank the community. Um, from the very first day, everybody has really been all in as far as whatever they can do to help in the search, to help pass information on. Um, providing water for the, the teams that were out conducting the ground searches. So thank you again to everybody. Um, I'm going to pass it back to you. Eric Reddick. The weather is rolling in. We've got time for some questions. So yes, ma'am. I was a few minutes behind, so sorry if I missed it, but has there been any indication at this point of foul play or anything of that nature? There is no evidence to support foul play is involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. But at this point, you don't rule it out? We're not ruling anything out. So five weeks, and you guys covered so much ground. Um, searching, going back, researching, um, checked out every case of a possible sighting, nothing confirmed. Not a trace of Sebastian anywhere. Nothing found. No footprints, no video, nothing. Nothing that is uh, taking us to locate Sebastian. And are there any working theories? We come up with theories almost daily and try and investigate and make sure that we're doing everything we can to find Sebastian. Share any of those? No, sir. Two questions, if I may. Have you ruled out Sebastian's mom's and stepdad's involvement in this case? And as a follow-up, have you cleared their alibi? I think the TDI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one of this investigation. There is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian's parents. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's your investigation is it changing possibly the avenues of communication? No, sir. You mentioned um, when you were asked about recent evidence, uh, we heard some rumors that there seems to have some validity that there was glasses found within the past few days. Can you confirm that? There were some glasses found in the past few days. Or have you been able to identify that they were Sebastian? We are still investigating. And on the Cajun baby, um, have you found their, how is that coordination happening? Have you found their work helpful? Are you guys working in unison or separate teams? The Cajun baby is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. Have, have you found their investigation or their work helpful, or has it been one of the distractions that, as you mentioned? One of the things that I really appreciate they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. Um, it's my hope that one day somebody sees something and calls in and this case breaks wide open and they find Sebastian. They've claimed they've received threats. To your knowledge, have they filed any police reports or reports with the Sheriff's Department documenting any of these alleged threats? Are we able to learn anything about what those threats are? And they'd have to call the police and report them. 
Okay, where's the search go from here? It's been five weeks since they did no signs. Do you believe he's still alive? And what are you guys going to continue working on? My hope and prayer is that Sebastian is still alive, yes. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this investigation to follow up every tip that comes in. Uh, some of this may revert back to us going over some things that we've already done for the sixth, seventh, or eighth time. Uh, fresh set of eyes never hurt anybody. We're, we're going to continue to work. <laughs> Have the stories been changing at all? Have you been talking with people and hearing them for a second time possible? There is no evidence to support foul play. No. Uh, <laughs> oh. Current leads that you guys are pursuing. We have tips called in daily. Any of those tips seem legitimate enough to expand up law enforcement resources? Regardless of their legit legitimacy, we're going to follow up on it. Will there be any other agencies pulled in to help in the search effort for this case? I'm, I'm certain there will be. You met with the uh, biological father and mother this past week. Um, was that at their request, your request? Um, was that just re-interviewing them again? Or? That was at the request of law enforcement. Uh, we, it's not uncommon to talk to the family in investigations like this. I've got time for one more question. And just. Overall, how has this investigation impacted the morale of your department, especially with all the scrutiny coming online? Let me put it to you like this. If my kid was missing, this is the team I'd want on. My uh, kid is missing. From the Summer County Sheriff's Office, up to Tennessee. I would want TPI on you. The FBI partners, the other local agencies, the Secret Service, everyone who's had a hand in this case is doing everything they can to find some action. Morale's high. We are here and we're dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping Sebastian in the public. Please continue to publicize this photo. Thank you all. All right. That was the press release. So let's have a look. I did write it down. I brought a new book today because my other one was getting a bit full. All right. So the investigation is ongoing. Now, what got me, I did stop the tape when she said this. A bit of a chore going through all the home security and ring doorbell. That's when TBI lost my attention then. As soon as she said that, I thought, no, no, not listening. Right. So I've sort of like blanked everything else out she said. <laughs> Glasses were found a few days ago. Now a few days ago <coughs> <coughs> they had the mother and the bio dad dad <coughs> setting. So that's probably what they're showing. But from what I can understand it's either Seth or the guy that helps him that found these glasses. Right? No threat towards UCN were ever reported to law enforcement. And then they keep going on no evidence to support our plan. Well, what do they call it when a child walks out the house, no shoes on, no coat, no phone, no money, but the dogs can't pick up a scent? Right? Now, <coughs> if Sebastian had put the bins out the night before where we come through the garage way and down the driveway and get with the bins, right? If, pardon me, if he had put them bins out just a few hours later something like that, but about four to five hours later, say, he'd go up and walked out that house. Would there not be a scent of him going down that driveway? To where he put the bins. 
right? But they say there's no evidence of foul play. They're still looking at me and saying, you just walk out the house. But I'm sorry, we're not law enforcement, we're not police, we're not TBI, we're not FBI. But we can see if we're the beer. Right? We can see through that BS because no way could would a child who had a bad experience uh, with fire ants. I frankly, it doesn't take rocket science to figure out that the mother and not exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't because. We know he had that incident with the fire ants when he was a young child. And since that incident, he's always going out of the house to shoes and socks on, or sometimes he, if he's just going to the letterbox or whatever, he puts slippers on to save and to put his socks and shoes on. He puts slippers on. Right? But to leave no scent at all outside that house, now Nancy Grace called them out on that. Because when she was on Nancy Grace, they said they were told this thing. I'm sure I could do a bumping then if my cat's on the table is knocking the table against the radar. Sorry. Uh they said they were told that the dogs had picked up on a scent. Right? that led to, what was it they said, a shed and to the construction site, the pond. It wasn't a pond, it was a retention pond. It's what they used to drain water up, to let the water drain into, right, so that they're not working on boggy and building on really boggy land. They have the water retention. Well, <coughs> they said the dogs have picked up a scent. Nancy Great spoke to a reporter, an investigative reporter, who said she had spoken to law enforcement and no dogs had picked up any scent. But I'm a bit confused. Because on that police audio, it said the name Max, which I believe is a dog, had picked up the scent and led the police officer to the retention pond where they found some footprints. So, but that came out to be a false negative, apparently. I don't know how you can get a false negative. I need to do a bit more research on that false negative, how that works. Because they're saying, the police are saying now, even after that audio came out, and you can't deny that audio, it came from the police, it came from the dispatch. Right, the dispatch called the police, the police were going there, the police were talking to the dispatcher. Right? <coughs> <coughs> so you can't refute that. There was a dog that had the scent. Because now the law enforcement have said from day one, no dogs picked up on a scent. So what was that on the uh, audio? Right? And I do believe now, that video with the two lights was the truck, the rubbish truck, because that home security apparently had stuck, had been stuck on 310 for a few days. The clock on it wasn't working properly. Right? And if you watch that audio, uh, that video again, as I did, you I noticed it the first time I watched it because I was going, oh my God, is that someone walking towards a car? 
at the bottom right hand corner because you could see some movement like art uh, some moving and then all of a sudden the whole thing lit up and it looked like a big car it looked like a big car so i think it was the work for you to me and it was later than three ten because they don't come around to about between five and six so that day which is still dark at that time I'm glad my just big men don't come that early, I'm flipping kill. So I do believe it was the refuge me. So thank you, Nick Bellis, who put it out there and edited that clip to just stop when you wanted it to stop, to make it look like someone walking from the house to meet someone else and then that while someone else then walking back to the house right it gave their parents the parents the mother and the stepfather right that uh, it's like validated their what they said how he left the house with a torch he left the house with a took a spotlight or whatever it is they use so it validated their Story by putting that out there. So, as someone said, wonder how much it was paid to put that out there. So, I'm sorry, Miss Beres. I won't be watching any more your lives. Sorry, because you did that for clicks, likes. And views and I don't like that I mean it makes a lot of youtubers look stupid because they're going by your word because you're a trusted reporter you work for a news station but what is it I've always said to myself I don't believe anything the newspapers tell me or all the news stations here in the UK I don't well, unless I get confirmed validation about something, I don't believe them because they do make up a lot. And I thought, boy, I should have stuck to my guns when I first seen that video because I knew there was something on the bottom right hand corner of that video and it looked like there was someone walking to the, this vehicle because it gets in me, and all of a sudden, this whole it comes into view even more. Right? And it's so bright. I'm thinking, what is that light source? What is that heat source? You know what I mean? What was it? And I think the two other lights up in the other corner, far corner, are security lights, have security lights. Right? But that big light on the bottom right hand corner, that is the, the truck. It's big. So I'd say, yes, that was the refuge truck. And the father said, Seth said, he watched the whole video. And you see him the truck drive away. You see him get in the truck and drive away. And he said in an interview the other night, in one of the interviews, he said, so that's why a certain person, the kids trying to contact me, isn't getting any replies from me. And we know who it was, Miss Ferris. He's the one who put it out there. So he won't get any reply now off Seth. But Seth was shown a video of Sebastian walking out of that restaurant with his mother heading towards the car. But like I said, there's no actual proof that it was Sebastian taking the rubbish out in the night time. They can't confirm it was him or not. So the neighbour would say. So did Seth, uh, Sebastian make it home that day? Because 
Katie said she drives the car straight into the garage. So Sebastian wouldn't be seen getting out the car. He'd get out the car in the garage and walk into the kitchen. Or wherever it is the, the, the garage leads to. So there's no actual evidence of life from the moment once they leave that restaurant, which they've got them on camera, once they get in that car and drive off, there's no evidence of life after that. So did Sebastian make it home? I don't know. People are questioning it. And as for people are still going, oh, and I see it all the time on some of these Facebook pages. Wow, well, they searched the landfill. And the men did say the bins were extra heavy that day. One, the bins aren't collected, picked up by the men. They are placed in a position where rotary arms pick the bins up. Right, and tip it into the back of the truck. So you just wheel it along, put it in place, voila. They do the same here in the UK. Right? And two, the general household rubbish is sent to a landfill. Oh, where was it? Let's check now. Near that. Near, near Tennessee. Yeah. Right? Not Ken Kentucky. The landfill in Kentucky is where the construction site, you know those big skips they use to put all the old wards and broken bits of wards and boulders or whatever they put in there right whatever rubbish they put in there that is where those skips go to kentucky why i don't know if they've not done a search on the landfill for the general waste you've not heard anything a lie about it and they could still find something now. I think that needs to be checked. But no search, to my knowledge, has been done on the landfill where the general household rubbish is took. Anyway, I think that is everything I wanted to show you. Yeah. As I said, if you are interested in buying one of these, hold on. Right. The link is in the the link is in the description. If you can and you want one, please go and buy one. You are walking billboard for Sebastian. You know what I mean? Christ, I wear a certain t shirt and people say, What's that on there? Well, I've got a sweatshirt now. And my son and my daughter love walk for I think I believe it's was it six minutes? Yes. And it said, no, I'm one for coffee. I love my coffee. It says, touch my coffee. I will slap you so hard. Even Google won't. So what was it? Even Google won't be able to find you. And I said the other day, I said, me and Bobby are going to have a come to Jesus meeting soon because every time I pick my coffee up, that cat jumps up on my lap and he keeps knocking my coffee. So we're going to have a come to meet Jesus meeting soon if he keeps it up. Anyway, so, and people ask me about this. And then I've got another sweatshirt where it says, uh, I don't know if you get a big America on Facebook. But it's through really an ad, an app on Facebook. Oh, I can't remember what it was. And it was um, 
Oh, got this uh, phrase on the back. So the person reading it, it says to the person reading this, right? And it says this little thing on there. But on the front, it says, you are amazing or you are worth it. Too. And people ask me about that when I wear that. So people do ask when they see these sort of things. They just, oh, I'm not seeing that. What, what's that about? You know what I mean? So if you can and you want, please, the description, the link is in my description. The link was sent to T Red 757. Right? And I got it off his chat today. He put it in his chat. It is legit. It's not a fly by night thing. Right? It is legit. So if you want one, and as I said, you can get the t shirt. Hold on. You can get the t shirt, you can get the crew neck sweatshirt, you can get the green, or what's that, navy. You can get the pullover hoodie. Now, I like the hoodies. And again, you can get it in the green, dark ever, navy, military green. And if you're a woman and you want a t-shirt, you can get it in. Not only the green and the storm and the indigo. Yeah, that to me is like light like grey. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Not indigo. And charcoal. Right. But you can get it in hot pink. I like that. I need to buy. I like wearing pink because it's also the colour for cancer research, and I'm a big supporter of cancer research. So, so please, if you can, go there. And like I said, that press release wasn't. That TBI, I lost it with that TBI when she said it was a chore. And the fact that the United Cajun Navy have not put any reports of any uh, threats, harassment, or anything into the police, it shows. She's getting threatened and harassed or shot at. Would you not tell the police? You would, wouldn't you? So that video I showed you of the phone call where they said they know where the body is. They don't. It's a load of BS. They're just trying to bow out, make themselves look good. Man and not, it's a load of BS and we don't believe you. We want the BS from our eyes. We can see clearly. Right? And there's a lot of people on YouTube that have been doing this for years, years. And they they know all the tricks that these organisations say. They even know, like, when the police say, like, how the police said uh, something about... So when the question was asked about the mother and the stepfather, have they been cleared? And he said, well, I think the TBI said it the best. But you've not answered the question. And then they was asked about, um, what was it? The changing stories. And you said, they've been very cooperative from the beginning. What? They haven't answered the question. So we know they won't answer certain questions. They'll answer it, but in a way where they're not answering it. Do you know what I mean? So, I've watched enough YouTube channels now. I've been watching YouTube channels for over a year. Right? Uh, I find it more interesting than TV, to be honest with you. But, um, so when I started this up, what, over a month ago, 
I knew what to expect. But I did, I just could just kick myself about that video because I knew there was something more about that video with the light. I knew it. I just knew there was something right because that big light at the bottom. And if you look clearly at it again, you can actually see something before it comes into view a bit better. You can actually see something moving towards it. Then it's like he opens the door and like all these lights come on. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you at that because I've been on here now in 45 minutes. Yeah, I've struggled through this and I apologise so much. But thank you for sticking with me tonight. Uh, I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow night because, as I said, I have got my grandson tomorrow night. If anything comes up of in, that needs to be shown, then yes, I'll be on. If not, then I won't be on tomorrow night. But if anything comes up where it's not worth going live about, I'll put it on my Facebook page or my Instagram page. Or even, well, <coughs> I'll put it on my Facebook page, my X account and my Instagram. So please follow me on all three, right? The links are in the description. Just follow me. Because if I'm not, if I'm like on the weekend, when I have my grandchildren, and if I don't do a live, if anything comes up, I'll do post it to all. Well, at least I'll post it to my ex and to my Facebook page. Okay? So, thank you for bearing with me tonight. I'm really sorry. My accent is bad enough, hard enough for you to understand. So with this cold, it's been even harder, I suppose. So I'm really grateful that you've still stayed here with me. And if you're on Twitter, please consider coming over to YouTube and signing up and subscribing. Because like I said, next case I do, I probably won't be going live on Twitter. I'll post it on Twitter, but after my live. Right? Bit like what I do with Facebook, I don't post it directly onto Facebook, I post it after I've done the live. So I think I'll be doing that on my next case. So please sign up for YouTube, come over to YouTube, sign up Crime and Justice. The links, the description, uh. Oh, the details are, are on my X account, right? My YouTube account is on there in in the bio or whatever it is they do. So I've got my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram, and my X account there. Okay? So please come and join me on YouTube. You can join in with the live chat as well. All right, let's just take that comment down now. Right, and um, let me know what you think. So thank you once again for bearing with me. And I will see you all maybe tomorrow, but I doubt it. You know, if I've got my grandson. So good night. Have a good night and have a good day tomorrow. Bye.